G'day off crackers. Welcome to another product review Wednesday. So basically I had pop up on my Facebook the other day that it's a year since I bought this EnerDrive DIY board. So I thought why not do a review on it? So let's get into it. Basically what I'll be running through is my thoughts uh, on the board, anything I sort of would change, uh, and then also give you some stats on it and just some general information. So first off, I'll sort of explain what it is. So these boards, Enerdrive make themselves and they get shipped to you fully complete, ready to go. All you have to do is run in your power feed from your main battery and then if you want a solar one. And they have the plugs already on there. So red is your solar input and gray is your main battery input. So for me, it was very handy that all I had to do was sort of put it on there and away I go. They are pricey. When I got this one, I think it was around five and a half grand for it. I just got the basic one which comes with your uh, 40 amp plus DC DC charger and your 40 amp AC charger. So that's your one that charges off your main battery. And then this one here you can plug into 240 if you're at a caravan park or at home and basically top the battery up before you go. Uh, so basically going into what I would change probably is the AC charger. Being that I was running an Ingle battery box, that's the reason I bought the AC charger with it because that one I was charging up at home before we went and the car was just basically keeping it a little bit topped up and that was because it only had a 5 amp charger in that Ingle battery box. Versus this one, having the 40 amp charger, I have not found a need to ever use the AC charger because that kicks in so much power you got to think, I've got a 125 amp hour lithium battery and that's putting in 45 amps per hour. So basically in three hours, that battery is completely charged from flat, which you're never going to take it to flat. So I can basically turn all the fridges on, which is the biggest power consumption for a fridge to start from warm to cool down. I can turn them all on, it might take 10% of the battery but within 15 minutes of driving, it's topped back up. So I don't actually have a need to plug the car into 240 before we leave to top, keep the batteries full because by the time I drive anywhere, they're full. So I would probably change that. And in replace, I would put a, uh, put a inverter in. So that'll change it from DC to AC so you can actually use AC appliances here, like Ash might want to use a hair dryer or a hair straightener. Coffee machine, she's definitely been on me about putting in a coffee machine. So I reckon that would be a better change. But then again, in an emergency, it'll come in pretty handy if for some reason my car's not charging the, charging the battery, then I can plug that one in. So I guess for an emergency, it's not a bad option, but I just haven't found the need for it. Uh, the circuit breakers have been really good, as you would have saw in one of my videos up at Byfield. The one under the engine bay tripped, uh, and then luckily all I had to do was put it back on and then it started charging. First, if it was inline fuses, a little bit more pain in the ass having to change the fuse and carrying spare fuses. Uh, but yeah, basically, I've had no problems at all with it. The char the actually, I take that back, I have had one problem. The Enerdrive chart, the Enerdrive uh, battery display has shitted out at all. Basically, show when it's fully charged and then show it coming down in voltage, but won't ever show it charging again until I completely turn the unit off and restart it. So, that one I'll have to send back to Enerdrive and see how good their warranty is. But as far as the unit, it's unbeatable. And I'll actually turn it on now and show you how much I get from the car because it's not a false. 40 amp, it'll literally go over 40 amps. I'll turn the car on now and then show you. Okay, so as you can see, that's now lit up and it's basically gonna go through and start pulling power. So you'll see this one here, the amps start ticking up and we'll see what that gets to. So it basically filters through all the different ones. If you have solar where the little sun is, you'll then get a channel start there and it'll tell you that one. So 37, 40, 41, so there you go. It's gonna to top out at about 41.5 amps. So that's pretty incredible to get that amount of charge coming into it. As I said, it'll just absolutely boost it. So the other things you basically get with it is 
This little device here is for your actual monitor, so you can just plug it in. Uh, then you just got your little fuse panel here, which is for you to plug in your accessories in. So as you can see, I've put just two cigarette sockets there. Over in that corner, I have three cigarette sockets and two USBs. And I've just literally run that cable positive into there, negative onto the bottom, and away they go, they all work. Uh, it also does give you, so if you do want to buy an inverter down the track, you just need to put a big, massive Anderson plug on it, and then you can plug your inverter straight into the units pre-wired for it. But yeah, it's a really good unit. Can't rate it, it's five year, cannot rate it enough. Five year warranty, and Enerdrive is, every, is everything that everybody says it is. So if you want to save a little bit of money and not get the red art, then Enerdrive's not a bad way to go. One thing to note, they are a Chinese product, but they're a high-end Chinese. So if you want to go Australian, then you're going to have to pay the price for the Red Ark stuff, but it's a hell of a lot more money and probably not that much better. But yeah, guys, if you've got any questions, comment below and I'll answer them for you. Anything you want to know at all. And as always, like, subscribe, it all helps. And I'll see you next Wednesday for the next product review. See ya.